What's up guys, welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. This is a bag of about 150 crickets. But what if I told you that the crickets in this bag are not ready to be fed to my pets just yet? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the importance of gut loading our animals' prey prior to them being consumed by our pets. You see, all too often we buy our crickets or other feeder insects and take them straight home to our pets to be consumed without realizing that these animals offer little to no nutritional benefit to our pets. That's because many feeder companies will ship those crickets, superworms, mealworms, etc., over to the brick and mortar stores that we buy our feeders from with things like white potato or maybe a carrot if we're lucky in the box as a cheap form of moisture and food for those insects. But that isn't going to transfer over very much benefit to our pets. And that's why it's absolutely essential that we not only flush the system of the feeder insects being offered to our animals with nutritious and healthy food, but also so that those things transfer over. Supplements obviously are also important and they help, but the act of gut loading takes it to another level. And it really should be the standard of care, not as a, oh, I try to throw in a baby carrot there when I have time. No, there are cheap and easy ways that you can ensure that your pets get the best nutrition possible. And I will outline as much of that today as I can. Whether you wanna go deep and intricate with fresh fruits and veggies, a combination of that and some dry foods, or there's simple 10 minute easy ways you can offer something to gut load your insects before feeding them to your pets. So, let's get into it. If you're new here, I make videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates. So if that's something you're interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and ding that little notification bell after so you don't miss any of my future uploads. I do my best to post two videos a week as well as several YouTube shorts. All right, so because they're the most common feeder insect used, we're gonna start with crickets. I like to keep my crickets in a critter keeper lined with paper towel on the floor with stacks of egg carton for surface area. Do not place them horizontally. Ensure that they're set up vertically as if any crickets pass away, this will trap the gas and make the rest of the crickets sick. You want it like this. All right, so you just got home with a bag of crickets. It's time to place them into your newly set up cricket bin. Don't be alarmed. You might also notice these weird little fuzzy caterpillar worm things. Those are dermestids, and eventually they'll become little beetles. Cricket farms usually add these systematically as they consume dead animals and are a good way of trying to keep things clean if you find dead crickets. Don't fret though, you don't have to toss these or try and get rid of them. A lot of animals you keep will eat them. All right, let's move on to talking about how to gut load crickets. Most of the cricket species used as reptile feeders are commonly found in fields or prairies. Although many cricket species are omnivorous, their diet in the wild consists primarily of consuming the foliage and seeds of a wide variety of plant species, not a piece of white potato. I really like to offer my crickets grains and fresh fruits and vegetables as gut load. There are plenty of different products on the market that are dried gut loads. They consist of grains and usually dried alfalfa or spirulina. Some folks will use these products exclusively and not worry about doing any other forms of veggies or greens. And honestly, it's better than nothing. I've linked a few dried gut loads in the video description. If you wanna use those links to purchase them, a small percentage will go towards the channel at no expense to you. In addition to dry formulas, fresh plant material can be used as gut load. Dark leafy greens are an excellent source of many nutrients. That, along with squash, are a staple in my gut loading process. Carrots can also be added as they contain high levels of vitamin A as well as beta carotene. A small amount of fruit can also be added to the gut load. However, we don't want to overdo this because they're usually high in sugars. As long as the fruits and vegetables being offered are pesticide free and properly cleaned, I recommend leaving skin and sometimes stems and roots depending on the plant intact as these offer different forms of nutrients. Many fruits and vegetables have high levels of nutrients in their skin and it would be a shame to remove them. There are different ways you can prepare these foods. 
For example, you can chop everything very finely to increase the chance that the feeders will eat a little bit of everything for nutritional diversity as opposed to solely consuming one food item. One of my go-tos for gut loading is butternut squash. It's full of essential vitamins, minerals, fiber, and antioxidants that benefit the animal's health. Not only this, it holds water, so it's an easy way to hydrate your feeder insects. We talked about how in moderation, fruits can also be added to gut loading. Blueberries in particular are loaded with antioxidants and very beneficial. They also help benefit cardiovascular, brain, and eye health. With all our ingredients chopped up finely and mixed together, it's almost time to offer them to the feeder insects. To be clear, you don't have to finely chop everything up together. You can just take chunks, throw them in loosely, whatever works for you. Although this isn't necessary, I like to sprinkle some bee pollen powder onto the greens and veggies and fruits before offering them to the feeder insects. I mean, hear me out. Pretty safe to assume in the wild that many reptiles would eat pollinating insects and would therefore consume and benefit from pollen on those said insects. Bee pollen is loaded with amino acids, antioxidants, vitamin B groups, vitamin C, beta carotene, multiple reasons why it could benefit your pets. So there you go, that's why I add it. And again, I'll have a link to it down below in the video description. All right, now comes the fun part. We get to feed the crickets. We're simply going to add our fresh gut load and our dry gut load down over top of the egg crate. You can also put it in the egg crate so that they feel more secure. But for the sake of this video, I wanted to show you that over time, the crickets climb all over the food and start getting a business. Look at them, sampling everything, munching away, crunching, you name it. They're having a grand old time. Eating, well, uh, eating very well for, is it insensitive to say, the last supper? Yeah, well, we give them the best life we can, right? Until they fulfill their purpose. For what it's worth, I think it's important to remember that these two are living beings, and, well, we are what we eat. So, the better you treat these feeders, the healthier your pets will be. Remember, you want to give those animals as much time as possible to feed. If you can do eight hours, that should be a standard. Ideally, give them 24 hours to feed. Hobbyists are often like to believe that mealworms and superworms don't require any type of gut loading because they come in a food source. But the reality is, oat bran, besides fiber, doesn't really offer your animals anything. All you really gotta do is throw some of the same ingredients we talked about before on top of the worms. You'll see very quickly that they do indeed feed on it. Watch closely as they quickly consume everything I've offered them. And again, you can even get in there and sprinkle some bee pollen on top, which they will also readily consume. And same as the crickets, give them plenty of hours to consume the food, and then they're ready to be fed to your beloved pets. Oh, nice. Gotta love the little sand geckos munching on those. And lastly, we have my discoid cockroaches, which are one of the only species of cockroach that are legal to keep in Canada as feeder insects, which is pretty exciting because finally we have a good sized roach that's easy to culture that we can keep. In any case, they're eating the exact same things, except they have a ravenous appetite. Watch as my colony here slowly swarms the plate of food. They're going for the dry food and the fresh veggies with bee pollen. It's crazy how quickly they're able to take over and consume the whole offering. The nice thing about these cockroaches is that they have a pretty soft exoskeleton and they really fill up on what you feed them. So they're a prime candidate for gut loading. And as you can see, my green tree monitor lizard named Basil clearly approves. Question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, what are some of the ways you gut load your feeder insects? Are there any revelations, let's say, that have come about from watching this video that you've kind of gone, huh, I didn't consider that, I might like to try that, or you're thinking, Dion, you're missing this, everyone should know to also do this. That's the kind of thing that we can bring and elevate and learn and, and grow together with. I want you to comment down below, and as always, I'll give it a heart, 
and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation because that's what community is all about. All right, let's get back to the video. And of course, you bet we're gonna talk about the few things that you should really avoid feeding to your feeder insects because that exists too. There are foods that we don't want our feeders consuming prior to being fed to our animals, either because they could be toxic or also because they can leach minerals out of the gut, making them unavailable to our pets. Firstly, we wanna make sure that the fruits and vegetables offered as gut load are pesticide free. Choosing organic products whenever possible and making sure to have a good protocol for washing your produce ensures safety. When it comes to picking dark leafy greens you wanna select for your gut load formula, avoid things like spinach. Spinach contains high levels of oxalates, which bind to calcium in the stomach and prevent its absorption. Instead, use dandelions. Even the flowers can be consumed or other dark leafy greens such as arugula, dark romaine lettuce. If you continue to gut load your feeders or offer the animals themselves vegetation high in oxalates, they'll continuously not be able to get calcium from their meal's content, and that is highly problematic. Another thing that used to be very popular but really isn't healthy is offering dog or cat food to your feeder insects. People thought, hey, it's good protein and yeah, it's, it is a lot of protein, and unfortunately, if you're not careful, it could actually contribute to your animals developing gout over time. So try to stay away from these kinds of protein to feed to your feeder insects. Instead, go for plant-based alternatives that are high in protein, such as sweet potato. And lastly, I caution you to individually investigate what plants are safe for your pets to eat, as things such as avocados, eggplants, and rhubarb can be quite toxic for reptiles and should not be used as gut load or food. After seeing this video, if you truly feel like you just don't have time, this is the product for you, Rapashi Super Load. Not Rapashi Bug Burger, that is a food to raise insects. You want the gut load, this one here. Essentially, this product was designed to be used with most feeder insects in preparation for them being fed to your pets. You just boil some water, pour some of the powder into a bowl or dish, add that boiling water, and it gels over. After maybe 10 minutes, you can take it and drop it in with your feeder insects, give them a good feed, and feed them off to your pets. I sometimes call it the lazy man's gut load, and again, a link will be provided in the video description. Well everybody, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's how to gut load your feeders video. I've been getting lots of requests for this video for some time, so I really wanted to put something together to give you a bit of a basic idea, or at least put the idea in your mind. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully from now on, you're gonna go ahead and offer a few hours, if not even a full 24, for your feeders to fill up on nutritious food before being offered to your own pets. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions or concerns, etc. Don't forget to answer today's question of the day, and I can't wait to see you all Friday for an exciting Feeding Fridays episode. I'll give you a little hint. These animals uh, metamorphose to, to become their adult form. You can, you can guess what the video's main subject will be. In any case, take care guys, have a good one.